welcome to another episode of Aspiring Teen Chefs. Um, so we are having a contest and there was a little bit of confusion. So I want to go through the how, it, how the contest is going to work. So I wrote it down so I don't lose track and I don't get distracted. So if you are a new subscriber, put a comment in the uh, comments saying you're a new subscriber. If and you get one entry for that, for new subscribers. Your comment and your like also get you another entry. So, so far, you're up to two entries. Um, suggest some recipes. Uh, each recipe that you suggest, up to a maximum of 10, gets two entries. So if you do the maximum entries, you're a new subscriber, you comment and you like. Well, obviously, if you're going to put in recipes, you're commenting. So far, you're up to 22 entries. Then if you recommend somebody and they come to the channel, they subscribe, uh, as long as they tell me that, yes, it was you and, yes, they subscribed, you yourself get another two entries. We're at 24 so far. So for each video that we do until the end of the contest, you can get... 24 plus because for each person that subscribes you're going to get two entries So I hope that clears it up. Oh, yes, and I had a question about international. Yes, totally willing to ship internationally have no problem with that It just might take you a little while to get there because of all the craziness that's happening in the world I know I ordered something and it took me two months to get it, but you will get it. I will send it um so on to the prize. I told you last video that I would try and get everything together and I did. I got it all. So if our cameraman wants to come in and stop looking at me and look at all the stuff. So this is honestly way more than 50 bucks because I went shopping and when I go shopping I like to spend. So I'm going to show you everything. This is a two cup measuring cup. I was thinking about a four, but if you're only cooking for one person, a four is a little large. So I decided to kind of split the difference between a one cup and a four cup, and I got a two cup. It's Pyrex. I've had some of my Pyrex cups now for about 25, 30 years. I've got Henkel's um, kitchen shears, which are awesome. As you, as you can see, they're brand new, still in the package. Again, I used Henkel's for about 15 years, a pair of shears. Never had to sharpen them, they're really good. I got a little Farberware knife. I have to be honest, I don't know how great the Farberware knives are. Usually I use Henkel's or I use what I have here, Curadori. But I seem to remember years ago I did have some Farberware and it seemed to last quite well. And it's just a little chopping knife. Um, I got a spatula, so if you have non-stick, that's why I got this one instead of a metal one. I got you um, matching tongs and whisks, just little ones. So these tongs are really cool. So they kind of sit in your drawer like this, but if you pull, oh, hang on. Oh, sorry. If you push in the lever, they open up. So when you go to store them, you pull out the little lever and then they stay closed and then they don't get hooked on your drawer every time that you close the drawer. And they're matching to the whisks. I got you these. Now these are really cool. I have them. I'm not going to take them out, but they look a little weird. They're for closing bags, cords, uh, napkin holders. If you're having a weird dinner party, because I don't think that this would be for a serious dinner party. Um, basically you put the loop around and then you pull the kitty's tongue and it tightens up. It's great for storage. I actually bought myself some just a few months ago and I think they're so cool and kind of funny. Um, I also got a set of metal KitchenAid measuring spoons. It comes with your tablespoon, teaspoon, half teaspoon and quarter teaspoon. And it's got a really cool little hook thing here so that these will actually, if you can kind of see if our camera can catch that, these will actually come off. So you don't have to open a, a gizmo to get them off, you just use one. Uh, these are the Enviro cloth and the window cloth that I'm gonna demonstrate right away. I also got this funky, cool little cutting board. It is not really marble. It just looks like marble. I thought it was really cool. 
and I got a brand new set, a brand new muffin tin. So muffin tin, I use a ton. I think I own about 15 of these. So I use them a lot. And Baker's Choice, pretty good brand. It's, or not Baker's Choice, Wilton, sorry. Wilton is famous for baking. They have all kinds of books on cake decorating and everything else. So that's our prizes. And we're gonna cut out and then I'm gonna start showing you how to use the Enviro cloth by Norwax and then it's window cloth. And I'm just gonna do three very short demonstrations and then we'll get on to cooking. So here is our stove top. It's kind of greasy, it's kind of messy. So here is our Enviro cloth. The Enviro cloth is imbued with silver. So it is an antimicrobial. And as you can see, this is just water. There's absolutely no soap on here. You can see it's taking off everything. So this is now wiped down and you'll notice that this has a little scrubby on it so it kind of gets the stuff off. And I did have to use a blade to take off some of the really burnt on stuff. Then you take your window cloth and you just go over it. And it shines up everything really nicely. So I'm gonna show you how this window cloth works on a window next. Uh, you can get a great view of how my kids put their fingers all over the windows 53 times a day. So here's our window. My kids put their hands on their window. So again, we're gonna take our Enviro cloth and we're gonna wipe. And you see how all these sticky fingerprints actually come up really nice. So I left it that bad on purpose so that you guys can see how it works. Okay. And then you go over it with the window cloth same window cloth and it cleans your windows amazing and I've seen these cloths take off a ton of stuff so the stuff you're seeing is actually on the outside window but yeah now you can see how clean that is and one more quick demonstration so this is our garbage can lid again our Enviro cloth is has silver in it and you just give a quick wipe and then you take your cloth. So this works really well on stainless steel. It actually polishes it so you can see how nice and shiny it is. You don't have to use any of that um, funky chemicals to make your stainless steel shine. And that's it. So today we're gonna to be making breakfast burritos. Um, they are quite tasty. I couldn't get loose sausage meat so we're gonna cut our sausages into little pieces. You can see over there that we've already done this. So I'm gonna get Joe to finish off these last two sausages and put it in here. And Jilin, I'm gonna get you to measure out some milk and start feeding these eggs. Just be careful not to knock it down. So milk, we need two thirds of a cup. So you can take this, find our third of a cup, see that's a quarter this should be a third and you're going to measure out two of these of milk into our egg bowl good job joe okay joe can you take our cutting board off we've done most of our prep already today and just go ahead and pour there and let's get our big deep frying pan on the front right hand burner good jaylin Front, front, your front, right? Front is the person who's cooking, and we're gonna turn this on. Do, 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 do. Oh, there we go. We're gonna turn that on to about six, so about medium heat. I find that this stove doesn't heat as as um, hot as my last stove. So did you put two of those in, Jillian? Okay, and Joe, you're gonna put some butter into the pan because we're going to cook our eggs so we need about two tablespoons that's about a tablespoon grab yourself a knife and very carefully cut another one and Jillian, i'm going to get you a whisk and you're going to whisk up those eggs you're going to beat the crackers out of them if i can find my whisk okay so i have a lot of those too so beat those up very good yeah pop it in and we're gonna get our butter melting. Hey, Jalen, hmm. how did the hen get to work so fast? I don't know. 
She took the express lane. Keep going. Can I see? Oh, yeah, now it's coming. Good. Okay, let's have a look. Let's try and fix this for you. Let's push that a little bit more in. There we go. So we don't want a giant hole though because then it'll just go all over. So just carefully now that that's more open. There we go. Good, good, good. That's about a half a teaspoon. All right, let's pour that in, give it a little whisk. Uh, as you can see here, our butter is almost melted. So we're gonna make sure it's all over the side. I really prefer using my wok for scrambled eggs and stuff like that. Your butter's just to make your eggs not stick. Okay, that should be good, honey. You can pour that in. And just because I like to pepper my eggs, we're gonna, I'm gonna get Joe to pepper some eggs. So basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna scramble up these eggs. Put some in, shake. Keep going, you can give her. It's not gonna come out that fast. Uh, that looks about good. So when the eggs are almost done, we'll come back and show you what to do. Right, so let me grab the correct knife here. Uh, so we're gonna take the peel off the garlic. You can see it still has the peel on it. And I was watching a video and it gave a really good way to actually peel your garlic and probably any of you older cooks that watch probably already know this, but you give it a little squish and off comes the peel. Super easy. And then we're gonna chop this garlic up. So again, give it a good squish. So unless you need whole garlic cloves, this is a great way to get your garlic clean. Super easy. Don't even really need any gadgets. So I'm just gonna get the kids. I'll get Joe to cut this. I'll just give him a quick demo on how to do it. Okay, come on over, Joe. So we're, we want it really small pieces of garlic. So we're gonna slice it really thin. Then when we get the thin pieces, you're gonna hold your handle like this, your fingers on the top of the blade, and you're just gonna rock. Because we want our garlic minced, so really small pieces. Normally people don't enjoy getting a big hunk of garlic, except for my husband. He eats um, olives stuffed with a garlic clove. Ugh, too much garlic for me. So we want it really nice and thin, and we're gonna do all this garlic. So we're gonna have Joe work on that while our eggs are cooking, and we'll be back. All right, so Jolyn is helping Joe just uh, do the last clove of garlic, just so it can move on more faster. Our pan is hot, and we're gonna cook our sausage mixed in with the garlic and then right near the end we're going to add our onion um, it didn't say to oil the pan but i'm going to put a tiny bit of butter in just so our meat doesn't scorch now as i said i couldn't find any loose sausage meat but i'm sure if you find it it's not as common people tend to like the links better because it's easier to use but if you're into the buying loose pork sausage, that's awesome. And we're gonna add in our garlic first. If you can get that in the butter. Okay, Jill, I'm gonna add in the garlic, and then after she's got the garlic, Joe, you wanna add in the sausages. Into the pan? Into the pan, yes. No, just dump it in, honey, you don't have to sprinkle. Look at her go. Get it all in there. Make sure we don't leave any behind. Garlic is good stuff. Mmm, I can smell it already. Okay, go ahead, Joe. Put that in carefully, please. Okay. Turn it so you can see it. Hold it so you can see it. Use your other hand to push. No, don't shake because then it'll end on the floor. Just use your hand to push it in. Good. So. These um, sausages do have casings, but they should be fine. So we're gonna cook this until the sausages are no more, are not pink anymore. And then we're gonna add our onions. As you can see, our egg mixture is almost ready. It's already starting to firm up. It really doesn't take long once it gets to this phase. 
So we'll just keep those cooking and then we're gonna put this aside. All right. And we'll be back when our sausage is almost cooked and we're ready to add our onion. Oh, and by the way, we did use purple onions. Purple onions are more of a Southwest onion instead of the white or the yellow onions. They have a milder taste and they're a little sweeter. So I already pre-cut these, but you use about a, oops, sorry, about a half of a medium onion. Joe, what do you call a scared egg? Terra fried. <laughs> Joe never gets my jokes. I'm not going to tell him any jokes anymore because he doesn't laugh and he doesn't smile. So from now on, I'm just going to pick the person who smiles the most who gets my jokes. So as you can see, our eggs are done. We're just letting them cool down a little bit. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention with these uh, breakfast burritos, if you do this big a batch, you can actually freeze these or refrigerate them. And then when you're in a hurry in the morning, you just grab one, pop it in the nuke, or you can wrap it in foil and pop it in a toaster oven or an oven, it's up to you. Uh, I personally don't really care all that much for microwave food. So our sausages are almost done. We're gonna add our onions very shortly here. We don't want it pink at all, because we don't want to get, I think it's trichinella you can get from raw pork. I can't remember the exact name for it, but it's bad and it'll make you sick and you will be hovering above wherever you throw up. So I think we're gonna add our onions. So Joe, you wanna pop those in there for Jalen and let her mix them up? Jalen, can move this way a little bit? Drop them? Uh, yeah, but carefully, please. We don't want a big mess. Can you hold things a little closer to where you're pouring? There we go. Uh, get the rest out. We want them all. Like I said, these are a nice sweet onion. They're not really hot. Now, a couple of things. I had to do a little different with this is it called for fresh cilantro. Well, I searched the grocery aisles forever in the produce department and this is all I could find was cilantro paste. Now normally you would mix fresh cilantro in here with your cheese after the onions and the sausages are cooked, but I'm going to squirt some paste in because it has a good flavor. We also have to add a taco mix and then our cheese and then we let everything cool down and we stuff so we will be back just when we're ready to add all the other ingredients take a very short little segment there let it cool we'll come back and we'll fill and we'll show you and we'll also show you how to keep them preserved so that you can either freeze or refrigerate them so that it's just a quick thing to go it's really hasn't taken us that long the longest thing has been the um, Sausage. So if our cameraman wants to get a good shot at the sausage and garlic and onions and the eggs. All right, so our sausages are fully cooked. Let's just fish one out and give it a little cut on the counter so you can see no more pinkness in between the pieces. That was a fairly large piece too. So our sausages are done. You don't really have to brown them. Uh, here's your spatula, babe. So we're gonna, I'm gonna add in the cilantro paste, since I couldn't find cilantro. It's like guacamole. It kinda does look like guacamole, doesn't it? Okay, and Joe's gonna add in the taco mix. And we're just gonna mix this up and then we're gonna add it to the eggs. And we're gonna add our cheese. And we're gonna let it cool. Well, cilantro is an ingredient in guacamole. Mm, no, I think it's, uh, uh, so we have to stir this up, get it mixed up, get that taco mix wet. So I bet you it would look a lot better if we had the fresh cilantro. Is so, this cilantro a leaf? It is a herb. I don't know if there's, I've never made guacamole. I could look that up. Don't know if cilantro's in there. Oh, that smells good. Kind of smells kind of celery-ish, doesn't it? So, so this is our meat mixture. And we are going to combine the meat mixture with the egg. So Joe, if you want to bring back the egg mixture onto the stove, doesn't have to go on the burner. Jalen, can I get you to put that in there? And we're gonna mix it up and then we're gonna let it cool and we're gonna stuff our tacos, or pardon me, our tortilla shells. 
Smells good, guys, hey? Okay. Yeah, let's get that in there. Joe, no, we don't need that yet. We don't want it to dry out, so we have to let this cool off a little bit. Apparently, you're supposed to let it cool off. But if you were going to eat them for breakfast right away, I would imagine you don't let your filling cool off. You just stuff that puppy and eat. Uh, here, let's take this one away. I'm just put it here. You want me to me to mix it? Uh, let's get the all the meat mixture in there first, try and get it all. Uh, Joe, can you shut off all the burners now, please? There we go. So, this would be good if you want to have a weekend sleep in or a weekday sleep in. I guess it just depends on what your schedule's like. Okay, Joe, go ahead and mix that up. Now, this recipe calls for a fresh tomato, but I went to check and the kids used all the tomatoes for their sandwiches. So, we're not gonna have tomatoes on it, but we are going to have, I'm gonna put some salsa on. That's actually not in the original recipe, but of course salsa we know is about 90% tomatoes. That's good, we don't wanna make, make mush because it's not very appetizing. So you're gonna taste that? Thank you, Jalen. So we're gonna add a little salsa so we can get our tomato in there and then there's other spices and seasonings and there's more onions and stuff in there. And then we're gonna to top it with a little bit of sour cream. So we're gonna add our cheese into the mixture now, but we don't want that, that's icky. So we're gonna add this in and I'll give it another little stir, get it mixed up. And when this is cooled slightly, because the cheese will harden again, so that's a lot of cheese. So the recipe calls for less than that, but my kids love cheese. And we'll let this, we'll sort of melt a little bit. And then when we come back, we'll show you putting this together. All right. So our mixture has cooled down, I believe, enough now. It's barely warm. So what we're going to do is I'm going to fill one first. The kids will each fill one as well. So let's take a generous amount. Now you want to leave it about an inch and a half from each end so that you're able to wrap things without everything kind of falling out. So I don't know, about like that. Kind of flatten it a bit, okay? Then we're gonna put some salsa in there. Can't have Southwest without salsa. And I did buy mild because my younger kids don't really like hot stuff. Then we're gonna put a little bit of sour cream in there. It's totally up to you how much you put. Like with most cooking, it's just, you do it to taste. Okay guys, you wanna try yours? Uh, there's a spoon for each of you for the mixture. Then what we're gonna do is you fold up the two edges and pinch it down here on this side if our camera guy wants to come and have a quick look. Let's smoosh that in a bit better. So pinch down here. You can even give another little half fold. And then back it up so you can get everything in there. I think my sour cream kind of went a little crazy. So kind of tuck it in and roll it nice and tight. So the size of tortilla shells that my recipe that I found said was six inch. These are a little bit bigger. These are probably closer to eight inch. Just because number one, I know how much my kids eat and I thought it might be a little bit more difficult working for the kids working with a six inch. So while they're filling theirs, I'm gonna kind of show you how they said to prep them to freeze. So you take your saran wrap, just take a little piece here, pop your burrito in, and just basically wrap it. This is pretty much like how you actually made the burrito. Just give it a little turn, and fold over the edges, and then in order to keep them from floating around and flying all over your freezer, you can put them in a Ziploc bag and you can freeze them or refrigerate them like that. So if you wanna heat them in a microwave, I would completely unwrap them from the, from the cellophane. I don't really like plastic in the microwave at all. 
But if you're going to use an oven or a toaster oven, I would rewrap this in foil and then pop it in your oven. Probably take about 10 minutes in the oven for it to fully warm. Yeah, that looks really good. Uh, yours not so much. So let's have a look what, you, what happened here, Joe. Okay, now stay here because if you're not going to be able to learn if you wander away. Okay, let me grab this spoon here. Let's get all of our stuff kind of together. It's kind of spread out right now. Okay. Okay, good. So, we're gonna start by folding this. You're gonna fold up one side. You're gonna fold up the other side. And then if you pinch this down, it gives you a nice folding point here. So, there we go, that's better, hey? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna work on filling the rest and then we're gonna have a taster. So we'll be right back. So here is our burritos. We ended up getting 15 of them. So I don't know how many you get with a six inch shell, but because mine are a little bit bigger, we ended up getting 15, which is actually quite a lot. Um, so I'm just gonna cut this up so everybody can have a little taste. Our cameraman actually ate one, so if you're counting the burritos, that's why it seems like my counting's off, because he already ate one and he already approved it. So let's just cut little pieces here so we can all try some. You want to get a little bit of everything in there. And he did recommend, our cameraman did recommend a little bit less filling, so it's not so messy. So, Jamie, why don't you go first? Do you have your fork? Yeah. Okay, grab a piece. Let's scoop, okay? So I'll help you out, sorry, because it's a little squishy in here. Okay, there you go. Everybody else, go ahead and help yourself. Mm. Let's have a taste of our breakfast burrito adventure. Mm. Mm. How is it, guys? Good. Good. Would you guys eat these for breakfast? Mm -hmm. Totally? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, don't forget our contest, like, subscribe, hit the bell, put comments, suggest recipes, uh, especially now because we're having that contest. If you need any more information on the contest, please, 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 please look in the description. It'll be in there. Contact me on social media. Oh yeah, don't, I think I just said this, but I might not. Don't forget to ring the bell so you can be notified every time there's a new video coming out. Are we ready? Yeah. Everybody can see? Bye. Bye.